Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Rob Strecci, breaking down all the analysis here on day two of three days of coverage. Got a great scenic view here. If you look out, our office today is beautiful. If you look out on the, the bay there, you can see beautiful Vancouver, a place where all the top minds in the Linux Foundation are gathering. It's not a huge event in terms of numbers, but it's all the right people. As they look to the future of open source, it's everything from security, AI, and obviously energy is a huge topic. I've got two great guests here, Dan Brown with LF Energy and Christoph Velomir, EVP GM of Savoir Faire Linux. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Energy, global systems are, you know, have sustainability challenges. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. So what's the open source mission around energy? Because that's not the first thing I think of. I think of software, supply chain, S-bomb, security, AI, automation, but there's a real angle here on the energy. What's the, what's the, what's the gist, what's the, what's the story? Sure, um, I could start. Um, essentially what's happening right now is the entire energy grid systems worldwide are going through a complete transformation. And this is of course being driven largely by climate change concerns. Um, we have to decarbonize our power systems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really the only way that we'll ever meet decarbonization goals that are being set by governments, um, companies, et cetera. Uh, and so it means redesigning systems. Traditionally, the way that they worked is you're a power generator, you transmit the power onto uh, um, a grid, then into a distribution grid, that powers our homes and businesses. Um, that's easy to manage. If you need more power, you turn up another gas turbine. Uh, in the future though, we're going to have distributed energy resources. That's already starting to happen. Solar, wind, hydro, et cetera. So instead of this top down, it's just a big jumble. Yeah, yeah. Power's I mean, going both directions from everywhere, and so it means redesigning the technology that manages these systems, and the best way to do that, we feel, is through open source. Yeah, and I think open source, obviously, the transparency, better security, if you see everything, but this is also an industrial IoT angle, which is also software, hardware is software. For yeah, software. We, we see that, I mean, the, there are huge challenges to fight for uh, attending this uh, decarbonization. And I think open source, first of all, you know, it's a way to collaborate. And even in some sector like energy where, which was very much siloed, you know, people need to uh, collaborate, utilities and vendors and professional services company that fight together to find better solution. And, and that's why it's a way to speed up, I mean, this innovation. Because uh, a anybody, yeah themselves in their, in their silo will be able to, f to, uh, to manage the solution. So that's working together on that. Take us through some of the uh, aspects of the project, the who's involved, because when, uh, when I hear about what you just mentioned about this, this, the energy, the infrastructure, I've heard stories, I've talked to, you interviewed people that are complaining, I have a Windows 95 machine running, <laughs> this OT environment, it's locked down though, we try, well are you sure? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And, that, and there's, there's some serious examples of old tech yeah. laying around. Yeah. So there's a modernization a aspect, yeah. there's a national security aspect, all kinds of efficiency. It's, it seems like a hornet's nest. Is, am I overreading this thing? What's the. Maybe it's just because it's a world in <laughs> transition. I mean, you know, all these OT technologies is, is challenged by, by the IT now. And we see that if you if you see the, the, the automation uh, control command, by example, in the su substation in, electri in electric transport, you know, they are moving towards to virtualization. So that means replacing black box by new IT technology that will allow a virtualization. And that's one of the project, the CPAS project, uh, which is a LF energy project, which has been uh, run and uh, launched by uh, a, util uh, a TSO, RT, the French TSO and uh, we, were w we are working with them, and also vendors like GE Schneider are mm. also working on that platform, which is, will be a standard that will allow virtualization in the substation. So it's, it's really a, a change of mind of the way they're um, used to work. And so it doesn't go in one day, because you have, uh, we change uh, the mentality, we have to change the technology, but uh, it's moving forward. There is no, there is no way back. <laughs> so, so I, I'm interested because it, it is, it's a supply and a consumption issue. Right. And just by virtualizing something, you're not getting necessarily consuming less. It, it all depends. It can be more efficient or it might not be more efficient when you virtualize a substation. 
uh, help help people understand why why is it important to go that direction? I mean, it's it's a small part of the equation. You know, uh, at the LF Energy, Dan could uh, speak about there are a lot of project projects that are more related to end users, right. uh, to direct consumption, to control consumption. Uh, the CPAS is really you know linked to. The, the, the hidden world, you know, yeah. the, what's inside the, the, the substation. But it's important because, and which is interesting, that's, uh, that the needs come from the utilities. And they want to develop a standard, like uh, a referential design for an open source real-time platform, on which vendors and utilities will work together to offer services to run uh, the next control command generation uh, software. That means yeah. that it's not only vendors that uh, impose their product to the utilities, but then utilities said, says, I need that right. to be more flexible, to be able to integrate the new kind of energy uh, at the, the edge of the grid uh, with the solar, with the uh, aeolian, so yeah. we so need a revolution on that. Is, is it that they're reimagining their grids. I know there's work going on. I know there's companies in, actually out of Boston that are looking at how grids are designed and a, there's a lot of work, I, I guess you could say from the energy side, looking at how the power distribution and how you take in things. And, and I think uh, uh, Biden, uh, one of the first things he did when he was in office as part of the Infrastructure Act was that requiring the Army uh, U.S. Army to have EVs on yes. all their bases. And so there's a massive grid issue at all of the U.S. Army bases, yeah. for instance. It, is this, are they coming to you saying, hey, you guys do distributed. How, how can we look at this network effect and energy and how we control all of that? Is that? But distribution system needs flexibility. Yeah. And that's what bring on the market virtualization. You know, like in the telco uh, past years ago, uh, away. So that, that the same way of needs. You know, the, the flexibility in the substation, that's because the demand, uh, the allocation of resource will, uh, will need to be uh, evolving. Can you share some of the technologies that's being used? I mean, obviously, uh, we're all open source. Uh, <laughs> Bigots, I would say. <laughs> open source always wins. <laughs> I mean, we believe open, and that's true, it has won. Open source is the best way, transparency, but you know, it's open. So if assume software supply chain is solved, which it will be, it's pretty much will be bulletproof on the, on the grid protection. But as you look to modernize the grids for energy efficiency, what's the open source angle? What code base? I mean, share the software uh, projects, what technologies, you mentioned virtual machines before, is it going to be cloud, it's going to be, it's obviously edge, right? So it's, this is like a great case study of actually some of the but edge. No, for sure, if I'm speaking about the CPAS project, I mean, it's, we can describe it like a, a best of breed integration solution. We did not uh, reinvent the wheel. Explain I mean, what CPAS is real quick for the folks watching. Yeah, sorry. The CPAS, that's the name of this, CPAS, uh, yeah. this project. Uh, this platform of um, virtualization. Okay, substation uh, yeah. virtualization. Substation virtualization, yes. sorry. That's, yeah. Uh, so but this yeah, yeah, we do have uh, you know, dozens of other projects as well, so we're talking everything from at the edge of the grid where you're creating a reference architecture for EV charging infrastructure. Right. People who have EVs out there probably have experience trying to plug it in and it doesn't charge, even though the plug fits. Doesn't work for I one reason or another. I was actually going to bring that up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> having having yeah. An, a uh, hybrid that doesn't plug into certain things is completely frustrating. Exactly, <laughs> and that's what our Everest project yeah, is yeah. trying to okay. tackle. Yeah. Um, that's just again one example. We are doing other things um, for home automation or business automation uh, with our Flex Measures project um, that can tell you the best time of day to run your washing machine mm -hmm. um, and can actually help do that automatically. Uh, so that maybe it's better in the middle of the night, maybe it's better in the middle of the day because the sun's shining and you have solar panels. Um, but all of this has an impact. It's small, yeah, it's small, huge. It's a huge but impact. they add up. Yeah. And how, who's organizing all this? You, got, you guys are because this is like, I mean I see this is like an awakening for me because I had no idea the depth of, of investment in this area. Yeah, Linux Foundation Energy, um, we have uh, 60 some members at this point. Um, it's a big, it's a good mix. Um, we have your traditional power utilities for a start. They have to be involved. Then our traditional vendors like GE mm -hmm. um, to that industry. 
Um, but we also have research uh, organizations, academia, government is involved. Are there mandates involved? Are you guys, is more proactive action going on? Or what's the balance between, hey, we, we, here's a uh, regulation versus community uh, growth, you know, top down, bottom up kind of approach. What's the balance between you know, regulation, top down, bottoms up, community? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mix. mix and, um, yeah. You know, in some, uh, uh, Europe in some ways is probably a little bit more ahead. Um, we do consult occasionally with the EU Commission on some of these topics when they're considering uh, regulatory guidelines um, around redesigning power grids and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but all governments are thinking about it. But a lot of this is being driven by industry. Yes, and I will really present the, the LF Energy like a framework of collaboration and innovation. I mean, that's the place through you know, the, 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 the history of the uh, yeah. Linux Foundation, the governance of the project, where industries or vendors ca yeah. can bring projects, put them under the governance, and you know, build the innovation around with other actors. It's a huge mission. I mean, if you think about, if you can get this modernized with open source, think about what happens next. All the AI conversation comes in. Yes. Hey, I can have an app on my phone or just, my machines could just do it on their own. Put the close in, <laughs> automate appliances, to fund, for example, for, for utilities. So these kinds of advancements only happen with a cloud-like or modern infrastructure, right? I mean, I mean, how far are we, like, what's the progress on this? I mean, just give us a taste of the, the, where the progress bar is on, on that, the ideal scenario. Hey, it's up and running, things just, it's all working, it's all seamless. Um, it depends on the project at this stage. Um, most of our projects are pretty early. Um, some of them are being used in production. Um, or at least in pilot, uh, Everest, the EV charging, for instance, that's being used in dozens of pilots all over the world okay. um, right now. So we expect it to be adopted quite widely in the coming years. Um, you know, RTE uh, did a presentation yesterday about uh, CPATH um, and how uh, it will be rolled out at RTE in the coming months in production, essentially managing all the substations in, in France. Well, and LF Energy, org is the URL for the folks watching. Um, take us through some of the thinking around um, recruiting participants. I mean, open source projects have, have modernized, it's where you got companies that have two flavors, companies who donate code, like Google's of the world, mm -hmm. Amazon's, and then end users they're called in, in the world, but other companies too, they're contributing open source code. Does it, does it track the same with LF Energy? Is it just another, another stakeholder government, or are they involved, so you got companies, two flavors, end user yes. funding or whatever. Yep. Um, what's the makeup? It's exactly what you described. Uh, we have the end users like the utilities, um, but we also, Google's a member, um, Microsoft is a member. Um, largely that is uh, uh, focused um, on other projects and our standards organization. That's something I haven't mentioned yet, we haven't mentioned yet, is uh, we also are, Creating standards and specifications, mm -hmm. um, for instance, for measuring carbon emissions. Uh, it's done differently. Carbon data is measured differently by in different countries, by different companies within the same country. Uh, and so um, we're working with industry to, to do that. Right. Um, but again, like the vendors who have traditionally been building the equipment yep. for energy systems are involved, and then the end users as well. But, yeah. Good. No, no, but for sure, you're right on, on the point that it's, it's challenged the business model of the traditional vendors. Yes. Yeah. You know, like Schneider, General Electric, ABB, uh, name it. Uh, yeah. they, they, they are yeah. to transform their business model on, uh, on yeah, using I mean, on this the technology. And they are working on it. They but, have uh, to go faster because they are, there are vulnerabilities out there on grids from the old OT that. technology. And things like that are happening now are so fast Microsoft invested in nuclear fission startup Helion Energy just a day ago hit news. They're gonna, so they're getting an energy contract to supply uh, electricity from fusion plant. Hmm. Is that part of the grid? I mean, nuclear <laughs> data center. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, this is the, pro this is the level of, a, of acute problems. I mean, rolling blackouts. If you live in Texas, you can't get ACs in the summer. California yep. has their problems. We all know what the problem is, right? You guys try to pedal as fast as you can. Exactly. I mean, like, yes, but 
<laughs> well, how do you go faster? What's I mean, the key, the key, uh, key success factors? More to developers. Yeah. Yeah, more developers, uh, more, more I, w I would say for every, you know, people that listen or that watch us, that join the force, you know, we will, we will be stronger together. There are yeah. plenty of projects that are looking for people to invest in. Speak to the developers and give them the pitch because I, I know developers' persona, they like this stuff. This is like, Brilliant. it's very mission driven, right? And, it, exactly. And, it's, and it's, it's a tough technical yeah. problem. So, you know, take the pitch. What are you looking for for developers? Give a, give a plug. What kind of persona? What are some of the makeup of? of I, I think for us at Savoir Faire Linux, we are looking for uh, embedded developers, uh, Linux developers, uh, virtualization developers, uh, yeah. anybody. But I mean, not only for us, I mean, for, for the for all the LF Energy project and yeah. all for the actors. You know, they are, look at the, the website, look at the project, uh, get involved, and even for companies, you know, this is the best way to find opportunities of business, you know. Yeah. This is really mission driven, but yeah. this is a, really a business driven too. Yeah. And flex the talent too, you can grow, yeah. technically. Yes. And I think, I think that the, the makeup is like, this has literally changed the world kind of opportunity. Exactly. For I sure. Mean, not in the spirit of like, get rich, you know, and they, you could probably make some money too. I'm not saying they're going to be poor, but I mean, energy but solving the energy problem and climate change is a huge accomplishment. We we see that in the, all the young uh, engineer and developer we who joined the company. I mean, they are really excited about working on LF Energy project. Right. Dan, give the plug for the LF Energy. What are you guys looking to do? What are you looking for? Obviously, talent. What are the things that's on your plans? What's uh, obviously LFEnergy.org is a website. Check it out. What's on your mind? What's we, we just want more people involved, more organizations involved, more developers involved, and we need more projects. The yeah. thing is, we um, need the entire tech stack. Um, we are filling in uh, every month, practically, we have a new project coming out, um, but it's, it can't happen fast enough. Yeah. And so, if you are a company out there that is working on um, a, a, an interesting piece of software that internally, it may be proprietary right now, consider open sourcing it if it can solve some problem that the energy sector is facing. Awesome. Uh, it's going to benefit yeah. all of us. Is, is, is this one of those things that you're able to go to like COP28 in Dubai and be able to advocate for this? Are you being invited given that you're more or less focusing on some of the UN, yeah, SDG yep. 7, are yeah. they inviting you into that So the that Linux Foundation, time? not LF Energy specifically, okay. but the Linux Foundation actually has uh, gone to COP in the past. Yeah. Um, uh, this past year in Egypt, um, we had four representatives on site and uh, we are planning to have folks um, on site in Dubai as well. Yeah. Um, the Linux Foundation as a whole has a number of other sustainability focused right. projects. Um, for instance, our Ag Stack project for decarbonizing agriculture yeah. and OS Climate for climate finance and Green Software Foundation that's making yeah. software in the cloud itself less carbon intensive. Um, all of us kind of have a working group at the Linux Foundation who are focused on these issues. Um, and we do, uh, uh, dis we are discussing our plans for college. Because that, that would seem like a great place to be recruiting, uh, just knowing the people who go there. Uh, I have to plug for my brother who's with Eminem Mars, and he's always there at this. And they're, like you were saying, there are companies out there that have developers in their organization that they may want to go and get involved. So I, I think this is a great effort, and I think both on the supply side and the consumer side, where the yep. consumers are looking exactly. at how do they modernize their manufacturing yeah. in particular, and I think that's I mean, a big it, It's kind of well. like a public-private partnership model, but it's open source and yeah. private coming together. I think that's Absolutely. the, the kind of contributor has got to come from. Christoph, give us the final word of the segment as we wrap up. What's the coolest thing you're working on in this, in this area? That's, that's uh, getting uh, you super excited. I will be redundant, but uh, you know, working <laughs> on that CPAS project is, is very much um, Interesting. I mean, because we are think we are a small company, yeah. and uh, we are really part of uh, of changing something. And actually, I want to invite uh, everybody to the summit. There is a LF Energy Summit in yes. June one two in Paris, but there will be virtual session. So uh, if you want to know more about what's the date? June what? June first one and, and two. June first and second. Okay. Yeah, first good. and second. So just uh, join virtually if you can go to Paris, or otherwise it's good. Good, good occasion to go to Paris. <laughs> 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 good I just happen to be in the neighborhood. I <laughs> uh, love that city. 
Yeah. Good job, well thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Great mission, and I learned a lot. Thank you for sharing, Dan, great to see you. Yeah, thanks on. for having and us. Congratulations Thank you very much. Bit. Super important, very important mission, and also for the sustainability of our, of our planet. It's a, it's a great project, give back, change the world. The Cube here, changing it up big time, day two. More content coming, we'll be right back. I'm John Perry, Rob Stretchake, thanks for watching.